Okay, this is the first in a set of simple videos to get you up and running on Formit. Um, so this first one really is just about some basics on the program. Um, so let's start just with some basic navigation. So right here I can see the X, Y, and Z axis um, as it lays out on a grid, the grid being on the X, Y plane. I can use my wheel to zoom in and zoom out. That's typically what you're going to use. We also have some zoom in and zoom out buttons here. The most common of which you will use on the side panel is zoom extents, which will do that. We'll bring everything back in. So on occasion in 3D, you kind of get lost or you get buried so far down in here that your quickest way to return is to zoom extents just like that. Okay. So um, the next thing is to rotate or orbit. And typically I'm going to use the right mouse button for that. There's also orbits. Um, located in the nav navigational panel, but you're going to find it a lot easier and more efficient to be using the mouse. So wheel zooms in and zooms out. If I hold the wheel down, I can pan. If I use the right mouse button, I can orbit. And that's the basics of navigating around while you're modeling. There's one more sort of interesting, uh, cute, let's call it, tool in here that I like to use if I want to get a little bit more immersive with the model, and that's the jetpack. If I turn on the jetpack, let's zoom in just a little bit, turn on the jetpack, and that basically turns the workspace into something that's a bit more uh, gamified. So I can use the WASD keys to walk around, and now I can use the mouse to look at where I'm going. Unfortunately, it doesn't really turn physics on. So in other words, I can walk right through walls and things like that. Um, but it is kind of a nice way to really quickly understand a little bit of immersion. Um, and you can also, you know, hold the space bar to fly and then release it to fall to your doom, which is all kind of fun. So uh, tap escape to get back out of that and then zoom extents to pull everything back up into space or into view, I should say. So the primary modeling tools that we're typically, typically going to use um, are the, the pencil tool, the create sketch. This first option right here um, gives you default primitives, but in terms of architecture, we're typically working at a scale and size. Uh, so remember you're working at a one-to-one -one scale. So if I have something that's 50 feet by 50 feet, I want to be able to draw that out. So let's just do that really quickly. So I'm going to establish um, or select my line tool and let's just start a new line right here. And I have two options. If I want that 50 foot number, I can sketch out across the grid or I can use the tab key and enter 50 feet also. And that will create a line of the correct size. So let's just do 50 by 50 by 50. Once I close, create a closed loop that is all in the same plane. So if you notice by default, I was drawing on the XY plane that will give me a new polygon. Um, I can left click that polygon right here, and that will default to sort of a push pull tool. And I'm going to pull that up. And again, I can hit the tab key to set height. Or I can also use an inference. So if I want the height of this little massing building right here to match the height of this one across um, the street here, I can select that face. I can activate this sort of push-pull kind of feel, and I can um, use an inference snap um, to match the vertex or face of that adjacent building. Or I could even say I want it to be half the height and find the midpoint. But for right now, let's just go ahead and snap that to be an equal height of that. Um, once I have additional geometry, so by default, as I mentioned, you're, you're typically sketching on the XY plane or the ground plane. But once I have some geometry, I can also begin drawing vertically on a plane. So it's really easy for me to start making additions or some basic modifications. So again, I'm going to take that and just push that in, sort of create a recessed area, and by that same um, method I could start drawing in some basic ins and outs to represent windows or patterns, those kind of things across the design. Uh, by the same token, I can also come in and select this surface. And then I can right click and run a really simple offset face. This allows me to create a distance in 
So again, I'm going to use the tab key and let's set a distance in of about two feet. So that's created two pieces of geometry, an outer and inside. And that way, like a lot of buildings are, I can select this inside piece, pull that down about three feet and create a very, very quick parapet roof on the top of those buildings when I need something like that. So it's just some really, really quick methods to start creating and building geometry. Now, as you're working, um, oftentimes you need to work to keep um, your models organized. This is a really simple bit of uh, grouping or, or whatever of buildings right here, uh, just in their massing form. And so there's not a lot to organize, but as I increase the complexity of the workspace, I definitely need to keep things organized. So let's look at a few things that happen with that. First, if I were to come in and add in a box that overlaps this box, you're going to see that I get this sort of cutout mark, but these two um, forms are automatically merged. So if I select um, this, let's just double click to select that entire piece, you'll note that it has selected everything, right? That's because those two, when I created those, by default, they merge. We don't always want that. Sometimes we want those to act as separate pieces. So I'm going to control Z back to undo that. If I need to create overlapping forms and have them essentially not sticking together, I need to go ahead and create each of these um, to have sort of their own unique identity. So I'm going to double click this box again to select all of it. And then I'm going to right click. And on this wheel, I'm going to go create group. So that now um, is its own sort of identifiable element in the project. If I create a new form, again, that crosses through that or intersects through it, you'll notice that I don't get this merger. And you can see I don't have that sort of intersected line. Those haven't automatically merged together. So if I double click and move this, those are two separate elements now. So that's the first step in terms of creating forms that sort of have um, their own unique identity, um, that I can work on them without everything sort of sticking together. So that can be very important at times. The next thing that I need to do with these is when I um, select something like this, I need to continue to name elements. So to do that, um, if I have my properties panel selected, I can select um, to provide a name. Typically, if I'm working uh, at the urban scale, I would name a building um, by its address so I can keep track of them really well. For right now, I'm just going to call that one box one. If you notice, it is not assigned to a layer yet, and that's because I don't have any layers, but that is the next thing that we want to go to. So I can take this, we'll click to set it as box two. So I have box one and box two, and just because we should Let's create something that's cylindrical, and we can name it cylinder, OK? So my next way that I can organize things is by creating layers. So that's um, this button right here. We'll switch this to my Layers panel. Um, so I can create a box layer, I can create a cylinder layer, and now I can simply select things and say, I need this object, if I go to its properties, to exist on the cylinder layer. And I want these objects, whoops, wrong button, these objects, if I go to their properties, let's do those one at a time instead, to be on the box layer. Right, so now if I go to my Layers Management tab, I can turn the cylinder off or I can turn the boxes off. And that gives me another way to begin managing these. Again, simple objects, not terribly important, super good habit to be in because as you continue to work and form it, you will find that increased complexity requires good organization for your model to work well.